And the other one is number nine, Just to Burn. I think this horse is win rated really well um, on the clock at Pakenham. It's just a boom in the shadows, surges again, and just a boom won it. Just a boom from a photo our Cuba done believing. I think number seven, Punch Lane, deserves to be on top selection. But it's all Punch Lane. Punch Lane, hands and heels. That was soft. Won it three legs, second, masterful. I just think this horse best chance of winning that it's seen in quite a while. Herman Hess in the middle, lifting the odds on favourite and scraped in. It was a nail biter, but it won. Penthouse trying to hold on, but Vagrant's coming out after it. Vagrant over the top and Vagrant won the Jeffrey Belmain. I just think it'll be really, really hard to beat in the curtain closer. And Jimmy Starr's going to power away. This is a nice horse. Jimmy Starr won it well from Who Dares and Forbidden City. Hello everyone and welcome back to another weekly preview. Group 1 racing is back in Victoria. It's CF4 Stakes Day from Caulfield and what a card it is. A lot of favourites that will be hard to beat indeed. As you can see, the green screen is back. I just had an idea that flew into my head that thought it might be a little bit easier um, to have the market behind me for each race just to help it. Um, just to help you guys through, you know, the key chance in the race and who I'm talking about and what price they're paying. So without further ado, we'll get straight on with the preview, hopefully with some more winners this week. Race one is a benchmark 100 over the 2000 meters. Hopefully you can see the market behind me as of about three o'clock PM on Thursday afternoon. The favorite is flash feeling. So when you take a look at the ratings for this race or the ratings that um, my system spat out anyway, is that they were all very even. So Bermudez, Independent Road, Super Razi, Flash Feeling, the top four were all very even. Um, and that was not weight adjusted. So I think Flash Feeling deserves to be on top. And that is going to be my first play of the day, actually. 1.5 units slew on number nine, Flash Feeling. Craig Williams, um, not sure if he's sticking with this. Yeah, he is sticking with this horse because he rode it last start of the valley. We're very close behind Independent Road. I just think now fourth up. Um, staying at the 2,000 metres is ideal. Draws to get a good run from gate three. Gets a little weight, little bit of weight relief off independent road off last start. And that should hopefully help help it to, to a win. Um, the other one is 0.25 units each way. My best roughy of the day if it runs, which I'm not sure if it will, but I hope it does. It's number eight, Maserati Bay. Now this horse is first up, but it loves Caulfield. This horse's ratings, where it's been first up in the past, have actually rated pretty good compared to the top four in the market. So I think the $23 price tag is way over the odds. However, it is also dual accepted for the Colac Cup uh, on tomorrow, Friday, over the 2,000 metres. So I think it'll go there. But if it runs at Caulfield, I think it's a decent each-way play at the $23. That's how I'm playing race one, Caulfield. Race number two is a benchmark 78 over the 2,400 metres. Divine Purpose is the favourite. And I have it on top. I would have made it a play if it didn't draw so wide. Just the map concerns me slightly of where it's going to get to in the run. But hopefully over the 2,400 metres, that shouldn't matter. Um, I think Divine Purpose is the one to beat. This horse's form lines compared to that of Oceanic Flash, the race behind one last kiss at Flemington last start compared to Divine Purpose um, and Chevalier du Fayou behind Aramco and Lording. The Divine Purpose form line, in, in my ratings opinion, was stronger. So I'm happy to take the Divine Purpose form line. Chevalier du Fayou finished fair way off in that race. So I'm sort of happy to look past that horse. Oceanic Flash can definitely win. I was at Balnaring, um on last Wednesday morning when Galileus jumped out and it jumped out very, very well. It was disappointing last start, obviously starting an odds on favorite and losing at Flemington. The only thing that concerns me is why isn't Damien Lane riding? Now, a lot of people could say, oh, he can't make the weight. Well, he rode Varvia on um, Australia Day at 54 kilos. And if he thinks this horse is really good and is a good winning chance, he would have ridden it. And he's not riding anything else. So that just concerns me slightly of treating Galileas as a serious winning chance. Um, something to take note of is Blake Shin gets on Wertheimer. Um, that could see an improved performance. But overall, Divine Purpose, I think, um, hopefully should get the chocolates if it gets the right run. Race three is a benchmark 70 over the 1600 metres. 
and this race. Another will is the short price favourite. It's my best of the day. I'm having three units to the win on this horse. Number nine, another will. Think it is a class above this lot. Hopefully it runs down here in Melbourne because it is also accepted for Sydney where Dylan Brown and McMonagall rides. So don't know where they're going to go. I am I hope they go to Victoria, go to Caulfield because I think it'll just be winning. This horse, what it produced in terms of my ratings, last start, first up at Sandown, was absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't see, I couldn't believe I could see the number when I, you know, spat out all the ratings. Couldn't believe how high it was. I th just think it's a, a really progressive horse. It's better than benchmark 70 level and just should be winning here. Draws 12, so it might be a bit sticky, but there's 16 horses, so it'll just be on the outside, hopefully with a bit of cover. In terms of the challenges, if another wheel comes out, my on top selection of the race is probably probably down there, hopefully. Number 12, Verifier. Now, this horse is to be ridden by Blake Shin. Was good first up at Flemington. Only thing that'll concern me with that horse is a bit of second up syndrome. But Blake Shin on, I can't ignore. So that'll probably be my on top selection if another will comes out. And then it's very even apart from that. I'm with another will. Race four is the group two autumn stakes over the 1,400 metres. No play for me in this race, but I think the favourite deserves to be on top selection, Southport Tycoon. This horse was good behind V8, first up in the Australia Stakes. Looking to get to 1,400, second up now, Damien Lane goes on. It's, it should be winning, shouldn't it? Only thing that concerns me is second up syndrome. Again, I just don't like it, but it flashed home from the back last start over 1,200. Rises up in distance, only off a two-week break. I just It just concerns me a little bit at the price, and that's why I'm not having any units on, but it should be winning regardless, um, or it should be running well regardless. In terms of the other key chances, I thought the main dangers were Snow Patrol number seven at $12. This horse was only three lengths off Southport Tycoon last preparation. Mark Zara takes the ride, think it can improve. And another one is the horse coming down from... Queensland and New South Wales, trained by Gary Portelli from New South Wales. Last run was in Queensland, flying trapeze. This horse draws eight, so we'll have to go back, um, but we'll be storming home late. So Southport Tycoon should be winning the Autumn Stakes, in my opinion. Race five is the Group 3 Carline Cup over the 1,600 metres. I am playing in this race. I'm having 1.5 units the win on number one, Young Werther. Now, this horse... Ah, can it ever win for me? It's won three starts in its career and I haven't been on any of them. So it owes me one. And I think it can get the job done here. Gets treated very well under the... I don't think it's weight for age. It might be set weights. I think it's set weights. Um, 57 for the boys, 55 for the girls. Um, it was very, very good in a good rating Ballarat Cup on a heavy nine last start behind Captain Envious. Before that, finished third behind a tissue and Jewess in the McKinnon Stakes or the Champion Stakes at Flemington. That is way better form than what any of these other horses have been producing heading into this race, which is why I'm banking on Young Werther's class getting the job done. First up, he's won first up before, so I'm not too worried. Draws well for a good run from gate four and I reckon can get the job done. I'm having 1.5 units to win on, as I've said. Uh, Yonsei, up to the 1600 metres, can go to a new peak. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it won. Foxy Cleopatra would probably be my second pick. That horse draws gate one for Blake Shin and looks to have uh, some sort of a chance. Unusual culture, probably around its right price. Fourth favourite, Loft. Well, who knows what that horse can do. I actually think Kind Gesture for Mick Ken can run well as well and might be slightly over the odds at $23. Overall, 1.5 units to win on Young Verta in the Carline Cup. Not enough ratings to decipher for the two... Blue Diamond Preludes, but I will just quickly touch on them as, as I've already got my on-top selection lined up. So the Colts and Geldings, the uh, markets behind me, high octane. I would just would have liked to see the race rate a little bit better last time. I did do the ratings for some of these horses be due to another video that will be coming out on Sunday, but just would have liked to see the race rate a little bit better on Australia Day. Bodyguard, the same on, the, on Turnbull Day, we're at one. Stay Focused actually rated pretty well compared to the day at Geelong. So Stay Focused will be my on-top selection. Has already been well-backed, but that's not why I've got it on top. Draws Gate 3 for a good run. 
Um, Philip Stokes saying he probably scratches it if it gets to a good three. Hopefully, um, Caulfield have learnt their lesson off last week where it was an absolute road by the end of the day. And hopefully it's just a good four and stay focused can run and hopefully win. Before we start the quaddy legs, it's time. Last man standing time. We have up to five competitors. Geordie has joined back up. Um, as you, well, will be surprised, Simon actually did get me the tips just late last Thursday, just after the video went and got published. So I felt bad that um, he got in early, but it was just a little bit late. So I gave him his results anyway. Anyway, he had 200 of the win on Coleman, 200 of the win on Jimmy Starr. So he's in the profit. But Sammy is the leader after tipping Miss Icelandic and Ray Magnerio. So well done, Sammy. We'll move on to what we're doing this week. So Sammy is having 100 of the win on Southport Tycoon and a $50 place multi, which involves another will into Yonsei into high octane and then we'll move on to what Simon's doing. He hasn't got me the tips yet So given the benefit of the doubt again, but it would be preferable to have um, obviously the bets While I'm making the video we'll move on to what Geordie's doing. He's having 150 the win bold Bastille 150 the win mr. Brightside 150 the place on Derry Grove We'll move on to what I am doing. I am I'm having just $300 the win on another will because I'm confident, but if it gets scratched and goes to Sydney, I'm going to have a place multi. Southport Tycoon into Asfura into Mr. Brightside. And Sky High Horse Racing this week is having $150 the win on Mr. Brightside and a $200 win multi. Miss, uh, Legato over in New Zealand into Mr. Brightside into Asfura, which looks pretty hard to beat. So that's what we're doing this week. And in terms of the Phillies, look, Bold Bass still rated way clear um, compared to everything else. It's just It just looks a class above everything else. And the Hayes boys have been quite um, conservative in you know their judgments saying, oh, she's a bit of a risk first up. And I'm, I'm not too sure why they're doing that. And they might be right or they might just want to get a better price. Either way, I just hope and think that class will get her through. Draws 10, Mark Zara rides. When you look at its win in the English banner, you just think this horse is really, really good. The horse that I think is massively over overrated is the second favourite at the moment, Kuro Yanagi. That race did not go well last start in Adelaide. Um, it just faces a big step up in class here and I'm happy to take it on. And apart from that, don't know where to look outside of um, Bold Bastille. So I think it should be getting the job done, the favourite. Race 8 is a cracker of a race. It's the Group 2 Rubiton Stakes over the 1,100 metres. The favourite is the Fast Mare, Azfura. And I've got two units that win on her. I just think that class should prevail here. She gets well treated under the set weights and penalty conditions. Was good winning first up last preparation in, I think it was the Heath. Or was that on Caulfield Guineas Day? Whatever the race she won first up last preparation over 1,100 at Caulfield was absolutely dominant. Faces an 1,100 metre task here and I think just her class will get her through. Three starts ago, she ran second, beating the length off Imperatriz. That's the best form heading into this race. I'm having two units to win on Azfura. I'm also going to have 0.5 units to win on number five, Zapateo. I think this horse... Deserves to be clear second favourite, so I think it's over the odds at $10. Jamie Carr rides, has had that Bella Nipotina formal throughout, throughout its life, especially last prep where it ran, I think, sixth to it in the Giga Kick stakes, not beaten far. So I think Zapateo is a force to be reckoned with. Wouldn't be surprised if Queen of the Ball won. Ray Magneria off the week back up will probably need to run a new peak to be winning this, although it does have the race fitness compared to a few of the first up horses. Hypothetical and Vivian right down the bottom can run a bit of a race as well. Overall, two units the win as for 0.5 units the win, Zapateo. Race nine is the feature. It's the group one CF4 stakes over the 1400 meters. And this race is ratings were pretty even. Obviously, being a Group 1 race, they'd be pretty even. So, Mr. Brightside is the favourite at $1.95. Um, I was surprised it didn't rate well clear. I think it deserves to be on top selection, though. Mr. Brightside draws four. Was good in its jump out last start. Its ratings have been pretty good. So, I'd have Mr. Brightside on top. Then, I was torn between who to put second or third. 
second would probably have to go to Pride of Jenny, in my opinion. Um, obviously won the two group ones at the end of last prep. Draws gate three, will settle on speed, likely gets a fast run race from Buffalo River. And when you look at its first up record, Pride of Jenny, six starts for a second and a third, which you think, okay, so Mr. Brightside will beat it first up. But its ratings that it's been producing first up has been group one competitive. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Pride of Jenny run a big race and give a sight for a long way. So, yeah. Good chance. Pericles as well. Wouldn't be surprised if it got the job done for Mark Zara. He's already been well backed. Uh, first up, gate five gets a good run. The second favourite at the moment, V8. Look, I just, I in my opinion, I, I like to see it do it second up first. I know it's one second up before, but that was off a five-week break in its first preparation. It's off a two-week break this time around. And last preparation, I think it was off a three-week break when it um, lost to Stapati in the Guineas Prelude. So I'd just like to see it do it second up first off a quick turnaround before I could get entertained. So, and I think those three, um, Mr. Brightside, Pride of Jenny and Pericles have got lengths on the other horses in the field. So um, yeah, that's how I'm seeing the CF4. Race 10 to finish the day is the Peter Legrand Stakes over the 1100 metres for the three-year-old fillies. This race, uh, again, very hard to decipher because a lot of these good horses are coming back first up and it's, yeah, hard to decipher. So another favourite I know, but I'm probably going to have the favourite Blanc de Blanc or Blank de Blanc. I'm going to go Blanc de Blanc on top. Um, this horse I just think is a really good horse, but I don't, I'm not having any units on. It's off almost a year off, so I'm a bit wary. But draws gate two, Mark Zara on. Michael Freeman is sending it down south, so he must have some confidence. First up, off a long break, it can get the job done, which appeals to me as a winning factor. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to say I think it should be getting the job done, but I think it'll be highly competitive. In terms of the dangers, um, I think Estriella can definitely win. Draws a little bit wide, but down the street at Caulfield doesn't really matter. Blake Shin goes on. Um, the third favourite, Amu Sira, I thought was it, well, it was a good performance last start at Pakenham, but on my ratings, it was only fair compared to the rest of the night. So I think that horse is a tad unders in the market, as is Exploring. And there's a couple of roughies that I've thrown in Saminator's Quaddy, which is coming up right after this. So, race 10, overall, Blanc de Blanc on top. Now it's time for Saminator's Quaddy. Last week, we were very close. Three out of the four legs done. Got knocked out by a horse that was paying double figures in the first leg called El Soleado. Uh, so, we move on to this week. Going a little bit skinnier, I call it the Christmas tree Quaddy because it looks like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? All the numbers in all the races. So race seven, one out, bold Bastille. If I threw another horse in, I'd have to throw another five or six in, so I just thought I'll keep it to one. Should be hopefully too good, bold Bastille. In race eight, the Rubiton Stakes, number four, Azfura, and number five, Zapateo. In race nine, number one, Mr. Brightside, number two, Pericles, and number eight, Pride of Jenny. And then race number 10, Going for number four, Brazen Style, and number five, Hip Hip Hurrah, the two roughies in the last leg of the quaddy, as well as the two favourites, number seven, Blanc de Blanc, and number eight, Estriella. So that's how my quaddy is looking for this week, $100 for 417%. Thank you everyone for watching this week's preview. To recap what we're doing in terms of the staking plan this week, it consists of this 1.5 units to win on Flash Feeling in the first, 0.25 units each way on Maserati Bay in the first, race three, three units to win on another will, and then we'll move to race five, 1.5 units to win on Young Verta, and in race eight, two units to win on Asfura and 0.5 units the win on Zapateo. I'm pretty sure that's all that we've got. I think it's a nine unit spend this week. Hopefully we make profit again and I'll see you all next week.